Tashi Dele Quintuche. Hello. We're very happy to have you back with us today and also very grateful for accepting Dharma Friends of Israel request and kindly offer this precious teaching. Thank you so much, Quintuche. You're welcome. Yeah. So like yesterday, we will start with the prayer of taking refuge uh, and uh, generation of Bodhicitta with Venerable Kartsan, please. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Supreme Assembly. By the accumulations I gather through so listening to the teachings, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Supreme Assembly. For the accumulations I gather through listening to the teachings, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, the Dhamma, and the Supreme Assembly. For the accumulations I gather through listening to the teachings, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sentient beings. <laughs> Kazangi Chukunjo now, yesterday, uh, Rinpoche already talked about this. He wanted to talk about it. And so he did uh, discuss um, refuge. Uh, he talked about taking refuge, uh, identifying the objects to be taken refuge in. And that is important to understand in order to understand the objects of refuge, it's important to understand dependent arising. So we need to understand who's the Buddha, the Buddha, someone who taught uh, dependent arising. And then of course, very important, the actual refuge, the actual object of refuge being the Dharma. This is what we need to understand. So that again, referring to mainly the teachings on dependent arising. And that, thus, it's important for us, it's essential for us to understand the qualities of the Buddha, the qualities of the Dharma, understanding, as said before, um, that the Dharma is the actual refuge. And the next part that we need to understand that Rinpoche explained this part already yesterday, but the next part that needs to be understood is the Sangha or the spiritual community. The, who, who serve as companions, like in the effort of practicing the Dharma, in the way that the Buddha, for instance, taught the Dharma, and they're the companions uh, helping us to understand the Dharma. But they're also examples, they're examples for us, uh, for us to uh, to, to see how they practice, to be able to see how to, to observe how they practice and, and take them as an example. So in that way, uh, these three objects of refuge are all important from the point of view of uh, dependent arising. 
also the Sangha, also the spiritual community from the point of view of Pratitya Sambhupada. So the pendant arising as it's in, in Sanskrit called Pratitya Sambhupada and uh, from the point of view of well, dependent arising in English. Sumbe <laughs> Yulogova <laughs> Dotigilinchita <laughs> Jungle <laughs> Condition Mibetasas. And with regard to uh, the Sangha, talking about the spiritual community as part of the Three Jewels, well, Rinpoche briefly mentioned them yesterday. Uh, he briefly talked about uh, the Four Noble Truth, and in the context of mentioning the Four Noble Truth, she also talked about the five ascetic companions who were the first to receive teachings from the Buddha. And in that context, uh, the one of the ascetics uh, expressing the fact that uh, dependent on these teachings, uh, a practitioner then realizes the different stages, that is the five path, and in response to that, uh, the expression of joy by the celestial beings who kind of express their joy by uh, proclaiming that the Buddhist has turned the wheel of Dharma, has started to turn the wheel of Dharma. And in that context already, the Sangha was mentioned to the Sangha <clears throat> in the form of these five ascetic companions who, because of the teachings of the Buddha, <clears throat> they put into practice what they had heard and attained realizations. So who are a role model for us in that sense, an example, a role model for us. Now, this verse of dependent arising, um, 
is usually recited a lot. So all phenomena that arise from causes, the Tathagata has taught their cause and that which their cessation thus has proclaimed the great renunciant. So these words are spoken a lot um, in the Tibetan, in, in, in the context of Tibetan Buddhism. So they repeat it a lot. In this sutra there, are like the essential verse, the words, the wording is slightly different. There are a few differences in terms of the wording, but the essence is exactly the same. So it, it presents dependent arising. These words present dependent arising. Uh, now, actually, this sutra, this sutra on dependent arising was taught by the Buddha in the celestial realm of the 33. Uh, the, the realm of the 33 gods then of course the question arises well how did the buddha teach this in the human world and that is presented in the vinaya in the vinaya scriptures so if you have the vinaya scripture if you look at the table of content it is the kava um, if you know how to search for a tibetan text then you find uh, this particular vinaya text in the kava anyway so what is that text tell us it tells us the story of Shariputra and Magalyayana. Shariputra who is known for his great wisdom, Magalyayana who is known for his miraculous powers. And the story goes that after Shariputra and Magalyayana had met, they were wandering, they were wandering around uh, Magadha and so at that time they encountered Asvajit. They encountered in Tibetan, it's Noben Datu or Datu uh, or Asvajit in Sanskrit. They encountered one of the disciples of the Buddha called Asvajit. And as they as they met him, well, first Shariputra, who he met uh, Asvajit, and so he asked him, What what kind of teachings do you have to share? What what teaching uh, could you could you give us? Because they had been in search for a teacher for quite some time. So they hadn't met the Buddha yet, but they must, uh, met Asvajit, and he told them, he taught. Well, first Shariputra disperse all phenomena that arise from causes and so forth. And in response to that, because of that, um, Shariputra right away attained some realization, some understanding. He, he gained a deep understanding of the meaning of these words um, that present dependent arising. And afterwards, he shared this verse with Magalyayana. And again, uh, Magalyayana, after having heard this verse two times, he then also um, attained realizations and dependence on that. So this shows us here in this case, Asvajit, Shariputra, Magalyayana, these great beings, they're like the Sangha, they're like the spiritual community who serve as examples, for examples as role models uh, based on whose conduct uh, we can do, we, 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 we can come to understand that we can do exactly the same thing we can act like them we can we can practice like them and attain the same kind of realizations now the story that you find in the vinaya that presents uh, this encounter of magalyayana and chariputra with asvajit like meeting the dharma and so forth how they met etc remember she just gave you a brief version of that story but in actuality it's really extensive it's a really beautiful and long story uh, that tells exactly or that presents exactly how this this sutra how this teaching on dependent arising was set forth in the human world ที่ชีบกับที่ดูที่ชีบกับรานิกดัวอําอันนี้ตะญินทุกินดัวชาวคาริเอ็นยินนี้ตะชอซุนนบะญีชาริปุตะมองเกปุนนบะญีดิเอ
chita lamgi tobe inde tumu mai be juli ke ade ani tuba sange chunde de ki chuzu dilte ne ta ke ba inza tam tembe je surat chumya chiki ta thus chen tu ta che ne qur'an ni ki ju ni je ngap chu ni je ngap chu chen ngap ja yo imbar ne o tu chen ki ju ngap ja che ba ani ta tembe raj gi gi o me chariya ani tu chit sange chunde de shudan ja sariya pe yundu and sange chunde de gi Corde Sentilia, Chusun Shime, Chicamen Sun Shime, Sutti, or to see them check. Papa Tatulti, Sindon Chigola, Nando Yanda Jolia, Nyamba Shadam Ti in the check. Or Tinde Yingu, Sherry Budamonga, Ukranigi, Ta Tanyer Nyer Nyer Yacha in the Cabaret, or Casa, and Nyen Jenny, Chusun Yangi, Lamden Nanyeti, and Piggy Shindo Ole in Gom Janeti, Congressional News. Tumba Sanke Chum then they shared it, Pigge Corso Cache to the Kamen Nanje, Pigge shooting a direction loose. Tan Ranigi, Tan Chimunet and Tumba Tot in a piggy race, Tumba Sanke Chum then did this, that chart and woody, Sule Tellas, Tumbe Kundulichin Chats Hera, and Kazan Lamdena in Giganti Nan Chats Hera, Kalchas, Konani, Kotu to do chen. Tan Tumba Tachi in Giretti. Kandang Narani Lia, Damongobar Tobelamdi, and Musu, Motu Nanyeti, Pigishing Dolly, Nedentire, Tindu, Nyanarani, Power Tatuli Chatse, and teaches to us in the general, and Chats and Tadarisha Dusin, Korani Churcham, Churchamashism, or Tusche, Sanke Jumden de Pumme, and Sheshu Kadula, Cherry with the Mongibunigi, and Power Tatulia. Rangi gave us to see and the Tomar Kuba or Tosche that the G. Dueshun, she ain't into two more in the Jiggy, Nati or the Tobasan de Junda de Gonda, Conani Gananda, T. Love the Tomb, and she had a chick, Reshas, which you might in the Tiggy. Suppose and now with regard to this particular text. The Vedaya text that you find, uh, if you check out the the air, if you if you look at Kaba that, as part of the table of content, well, in connection to that, Rubichi Sata he would like to talk about um, the following uh, that as part of the story, the part of the story is that the Buddha was at Rajkriya, which is the capital of Magadha. Um, he was in that area in this bamboo grove, and he was actually giving a teaching on the Vinaya. He was giving a teaching on the Hira Vinaya. He was talking about uh, cause effect and so forth. So he basically uh, described the Vinaya. And as he sat there with his disciple, with his entourage, his, his uh, well followers, like other monks, um, at that time, uh, he he was aware of uh, Shaiputra and Mogalyayana that they were approaching this area, that they were the area that they had arrived in the vicinity. And because he knew he had this karmic connection with the two of them, with Shaiputra and Mogalyayana from the past, and he knew the great role they would play in the future, that they would become followers of the Buddha and they would uh, play such a great role. Um, in the in the the teaching of the dharma <clears throat> so therefore he actually instructed asjavit asvajit asvaji he instructed him and told him well today these two uh, shayapuja and mogalayana who have a strong connection to from the past they're going to come into the vicinity they're going to be in the area so please uh try to meet them make an effort to walk towards them to meet them and exactly in the way as he was instructed, Asvajit uh, agreed to doing this. And the Venerable Asvajit then went into, into the area where Shariputra and Mogalyayana was. And he met first, he met uh, Shariputra. And as told earlier, told in the story earlier, he then uh, gave him that verse, that verse on Dependent Rising. Now, afterwards, afterwards, those two, and they actually, they weren't on their own. Shariputra and Magalayana weren't traveling on their own. They actually had disciples who traveled with them. 
250 each. So Shariputra had 250 disciples traveling with him, and Mogalayana had 250 disciples traveling with him. So altogether, they had 500 disciples who traveled with the two of them. And so after they had received this teaching, so through Asvajit receiving this teaching uh, on dependent arising, first Shariputra, then Shariputra passed it on to Mogalayana, they wanted to go and meet the Buddha. They really were now inspired to go and see the Buddha and were told to go uh, to this bamboo grove. So, so they traveled to that uh, area. And there they saw the Buddha. They, they, the, the, the Buddha was the main person, of course, they wanted to meet. They saw the Buddha underneath a tree giving a teaching. And as they were approaching uh, these, these, these monks, these, well, the Buddha and the Sangha, they also saw Asvajit who gave them the first teaching. So they were approaching it. Uh, Asvajit was out underneath a tree. And so there was, they were thinking, what should we do? The main person, of course, is the Buddha. Should we pay our respect first to the Buddha? Or should we pay our respect to Asvajit who gave us the first teaching? So they briefly thought about it and then decided to approach Asvajit first because he was the one who gave them the first teaching and only after that so pay their respect prostrate themselves before Asvajit and then turn towards the Buddha and of course pay their respect to the Buddha and that's exactly as they decided to do uh, they actually uh, well they acted acted exactly in that way they did pay their respect first to asvajit and there are, and after that they then uh, approached the buddha uh, and then asked the buddha well paid their respect and asked the buddha to be able to join uh, the community to to become monks to become ordained and join the community and Rinpoche says this is a very special teaching this is a very special teaching in terms of reliance on your spiritual teacher that they rely that they prostrated before the person who gave the first teachings Year <laughs> Tindendamdochesi Yedevati, <laughs> So Rinpoche said he would like to add uh, one more uh, idea or he would like to add something to what he said earlier. Well, first of all, there are endless Buddhas. We talk about endless, limitless Buddhas in terms of the three times, in terms of the past, present and future, there are endless Buddhas. And so as we usually aspire, aspire to become fully enlightened for the benefit of sentient beings, we kind of generate that wish. In that context, it is possible that we have doubt. We have doubt in the sense that we feel, well, can I really benefit sentient beings? I mean, there are countless Buddhas around. Am I really going to make a difference? 
And when we have that doubt, when we have that natural doubt that there's really not much we can do because there are already all these uh, endless Buddhas <clears throat> that we can't really contribute in any way. Well, in that context, the story is helpful. It is helpful. And of course, Rupert says, well, we may have these doubts because there's no end to our doubts and our different ideas and wrong, um, wrong um, perceptions and so forth, wrong ideas. But anyway, in this context, the story can help in that here the Buddha had a special connection to Asvajit of, of the different beings. He had a special connection to, to Asvajit, for instance. And that's why he then told him to go rich, to Rajgriya and um, kind of connect with the, the Shariputra and Magalayana to be able to be uh, introduced to the fold, to be introduced to the Sangha. So it's this great connection we have. It's this great connection we have. So in this case, this connection of Asvajit to his teacher, to the Buddha. And that is something very important to understand, this connection to uh, a teacher, a connection to have with other beings, this karmic connection, this karmic connection we have. And that is also why Lama Tsongkhapa, the great Lama Tsongkhapa, for instance, he has said when he had these visions uh, with Manjusha, or actually Manjushri told Lama Tsongkhapa, and Lama Tsongkhapa uh, then uh, was mentioned in it, or mentioned it in his teachings. So. What Manjushri told Lama Tsongkhapa was the following. The three things we should do. One thing is to supplicate the Lama by way of seeing the Lama and the Yida, the meditative God, uh, the meditative deity as inseparable, as of one nature. That's one part, one, one uh, instruction, one advice Manjushri gave. So we should see the Lama as inseparable from the, from the spirit, from the, from the Yida and supplicate them. The second is to study, reflect on, and meditate on the scriptures, on the teachings. We should do this. So study, reflect, and meditate on the teachings. And lastly, we should uh, accumulate merit and purify negativities. Now, those are the three practices we should engage in, in that context of having a close, in, in particular with this connection we have karmic connection we have with particular beings, uh, well, especially in this context with one's own Nama. And in that, and therefore it's most effective in terms of our uh, effectiveness as a Buddha. Mm -hmm. The <laughs> ディケベディケスナジドアオコナガチムチレデドアカレレスドエネケンスナテンチムチレスヨアメベケンミダベケンミベケンスオヨアメベケンスドタベギュレチムチマレスエネミダベケンスドタベギュレチムチマレスオタ
yula bokpa sabi water tea and kunjung ndo rumbati ki bokpa pro chen kinis chen ta kotu ya chi dubas Now, Rinpoche spoke yesterday about this verse, all phenomena that rise from causes, the Tathagata has taught their cause and that which is their cessation and so forth. Rinpoche explained this verse, which is the most important verse of this particular sutra we're studying right now. Well, he's explained uh, that verse from the point of view of the Four Noble Truth. And that should suffice. Rinpoche has explained it and uh, Rinpoche says there's nothing more he needs to add to that. That is sufficient. However, there's also another way in which this particular verse can be interpreted or can be explained. It can be explained from the point of view of the 12 links of dependent arising. Now, we talk about the 12 links of dependent arising from the point of view of the Hira path. We talk, of, uh, we talk of the 12 links of dependent arising from the point of view of the solitary realizer path. Uh, so there are different ways of presenting it, but in any case, um here in this context um it's important to understand that the 12 links the 12 links um are also presented in this particular verse and as they are set forth for instance in, in the rice seedling sutra so there's this connection between the rice seedling sutra and the sutra on dependent arising in the sense that the rice seedling sutra has said that because this exists that exists because this arises that arises and because there's ignorance uh there's car there's um there's um compositional factor or compositional uh, compounded karma because there's compounded karma there's consciousness and so forth therefore this sutra the sutra this the, the rice seedling sutra also talks of dependent arising it sets forth dependent arising similar to the sutra so so this this verse i'm sorry the the verse of the Sutra on Dependent Rising, where all phenomena that arise from causes, all phenomena here refers to the truth of suffering, and the causes, the causes from which all phenomena arise, uh, refers to the origin of suffering. Now, the truth of suffering and the origin of suffering, well, they're also presented uh, by way of the, presenting the, the 12 links, presenting the 12 links in the way, well, First, there's uh, ignorance and so forth. But if we look at what the Rice Seedling Sutra teaches us, it says, because this exists, that exists. Because this arises, that arises. Those words, first of all, teach three characteristics, three characteristics that are important in the context of uh, dependent arising, in particular with regard to dependent arising, the dependent arising of the 12 links. In the sense that it teaches these three characteristics, which are first of all, First of all, the unmovability to literally translate it. The second is the characteristic of impermanence. And the, the third one is the, the characteristic of correspondence in the sense that um, the first one, immovability, is saying that phenomena do not come into existence. So uh, the, the, the truth of suffering, for instance, does not come in existence. Um, independence on the mental movement of some kind of deity, some kind of permanent, unchanging deity, but rather uh, it comes in existence and dependence on a cause. It has a cause. It's not some permanent entity like a deity. That's the first characteristic. Secondly, impermanent phenomena such as the, the that such as true suffering, etc., comes it comes into existence in dependence on an impermanent, impermanent cause. So not just a cost, but an impermanent cost. And thirdly, the corresponding characteristic is such that this phenomenon, this phenomenon, this truth of suffering or whichever other phenomenon, it comes into existence and dependence on a cause that has potential to be, has the potential to give rise to it. It's not just any cause, but a cause that has the potential to give rise to this particular phenomenon. And then it says, so th this is what is expressed with the words, because this exists, that exists, because this arises, that arises. And then this, these three characteristics um, are kind of illustrated by way of the sutra saying, because there's ignorance, therefore there's compounded, compounded action, because there's compounded action, there's consciousness and so forth. And in that way, you have the presentation of the 12 links 
in different ways. I mean, there is the presentation from the point of view of afflicted phenomena, because there is ignorance, therefore there's comp compounded karma, because there's compounded karma, there's consciousness, and so forth. That is the forward, the forward sequence. And there's the reverse sequence, or sequence, the reverse sequence of the 12 links, again, from the point of view of the, the, the from the afflicted point of view, in that the reverse sequence being, if um, if ignorance is eliminated, then compounded karma is eliminated. If compounded karma is eliminated, then consciousness that holds that karma is eliminated. And so that is from the point of view of the, okay, I'll continue later. and <laughs> Tinde Okay. That <laughs> Ranches should have a chimba, chi, sungadua, tigi, ta, tumatiche, sungi chini, ti, rasinere, sungu yorella, natural and deni, ya, tomboya come and sung in do, or shindu tabe, where seg is empty, new man empty, and to me, ching de meba, or tindici, rasingi, tumatataba in the bachi, or ti, and ranchi, to casual. Uh Shoe 
Um, now, with regard to, therefore, these 12 links, uh, you have the, the afflicted version, the afflicted version, which refers to, well, saying, because there's ignorance, therefore, there's compounded karma, and the, that is the forward uh, sequence, the forward sequence of the afflicted version, and then the reverse uh, version is because there is um, because there is aging and death. Therefore, that is preceded uh, by birth, and birth is preceded by becoming, and so forth. That is the afflicted forward version. Uh, it's forward sequence, and then you have the um, non-afflicted forward version and reverse version. So the the non-afflicted uh, forward uh, sequence is if you eliminate um, uh, ignorance, you eliminate compounded karma and so forth. The the non-afflicted reverse sequence is saying, well, because you eliminated um, because. So that this the elimination the elimination of um, aging and death uh, that was produced that came from the elimination of birth which came from the elimination of or overcoming uh, age uh, uh, birth that was overcome through existence so in that way you have these different versions of the twelve links. Now, with regard to this particular verse, all phenomena that arise from causes and so forth, although it's very short, it's extremely extensive. It is so extensive because it describes, well, first of all, the Four Noble Truth, and then, of course, the phenomena, uh, the, the arising of suffering. So from the point of view of the afflicted version of the Twelve Links, to so how from particular causes suffering arises and the reverse version how through different paths the cessation is attained now um she repeated the same as he said before uh, then once again he said well with regard to the 12 links now you have the uh, afflicted version the afflicted version um can be again divided into um the forward sequence and the reverse sequence the forward version being because there is uh, ignorance there is compounded karma and so forth the reverse afflicted version is well um uh, death and so the last the last link the 12th link so first sorry i said uh, because there's ignorance there's compounded karma so because there's the first link there's the second link then for the reverse version you go to the 12th link so the 12th link is uh, aging and death that has arisen from the 11th link which was birth and so forth that is uh, the reverse afflicted version so starting from the end then you have the purified version the purified version being again divided into the uh, forward sequence and the reverse sequence the forward sequence being if you eliminate the first link ignorance you eliminate the second link uh, compounded uh, karma and so forth. Um, and if you eliminate compounded karma, you eliminate the third link consciousness, etc. That is the forward version. Then the reverse version, the reverse non afflicted version is um, aging and death were eliminated. Number 12, aging and death were eliminated because number 11, birth was eliminated. And birth, number 11, birth was eliminated because existence was eliminated and so forth. And that way, this, you have these very extensive, you have this very extensive presentation of the 12 links. Now, what we need to understand, and this is what Nagarjuna himself has said, because ignorance arises, there is samsaric existence. Um, therefore, here, we understand that the root of this, the root cause is ignorance, is the misapprehension of reality, but we can eliminate it. How do we know it can be eliminated? There are three reasons. Three reasons are given for why ignorance, this root misapprehension of reality that is at the beginning of the 12 links, that can be eliminated. First of all, the first reason is that it's a mistaken mind. Its object does not accord with reality. The second reason is that it's merely temporary. And the third reason is that it's not in the nature of the mind. This is quite important. The third reason is really important. So for instance, Maitreya in his Uttara Tantra, um, he said the same, he expressed exactly that with these words, um, that the stains are not in the nature of the mind. So therefore they are, um, they are, they are temporary. So they're not in the nature of the mind, therefore they're temporary. 
And that's why we also talk about the natural Buddha nature. The natural, what is the natural Buddha nature? Well, that refers to the lack of inherent existence of the mind. The, the lack of inherent existence of the mind that describes um, the, the it describes Buddha nature. And then of course the mind itself and this is even better described in the, or even, or even though it's slightly differently described in the tantric system. In the tantric system, Buddha nature is described to be the subtle clear light mind. So the subtle clear light mind that is free from any obscurations, that doesn't, in, it, it doesn't come along with any obscurations, with any afflictions, that is Buddha nature. And once again, that shows um, that in terms of the, the actual nature of the mind, especially the subtlest kind of mind that will eventually uh, continue to become the mind of a Buddha, that that is actually not affected by the afflictions, which therefore accounts for the fact that the, that the afflictions are not in the nature of the mind and they're only temporary. Therefore, it is possible, it is possible since the affliction, the afflictions, the obscurations, all our shortcomings are not in the nature of our mind. So being temporary, we can actually, if we apply the appropriate uh, antidotes, if we apply the right kind of antidotes, we can overcome all these stains, we can overcome all these shortcomings and then attain the pure body of a Buddha, the pure bodies, the different kayas of a Buddha, the pure state of a body, uh, pure state of a Buddha, which is the actualization of this pure state, of this pure state of mind that we have already now in a potential form. So this is important to understand in this in this particular context. This is important to understand. On a personal note, I want to apologize to those English listeners. Yesterday, I had some technical difficulty and I couldn't hear Rinpoche properly, at least not in the very beginning. So I want to apologize for um, any mistakes I made. I, I think I got the gist of what Rinpoche said, but I may have omitted things uh, and well added things that Rinpoche didn't say. So my apologies, but. Um, now it's all working properly again. the naturally present potential. המסורת של הסוטרה, שמסתכלים על זה מנקודת המבט של אסכולות הטנטרה או מנטרה, במיוחד מחלקת הטנטרה הגבוהה ביותר, אנחנו מדברים... אבל התודעה עצמה היא התודעה הכי מעודנת, היא נקייה מהזיהומים. Yes, it's exactly that. So um, it says in in uh, in Atreus Uttar Tantra, since the these stains are not in the nature of the mind, uh, therefore they are temporary. Bo <laughs> Matsuji <laughs> Marie Dibe and Sitchison and Shinchi and Longeva Kansal Manishabina, and 
lu nga yi sunga wa juwa po o chi tinde chi gi ta rup chi ye de ba rup chi maran so ya chi chis lo ya shat de shat de rup chi ngoi zin de chi o ta nge lu nge nga nge nam shi sa chi tinde chi gi lu ta nga ta yi ta tu so nge lu ta chi sa chi yor ves na tende yor yor re te tada naran su gi Tame lo i chitar sunga na shin chi ki kanla ya teba meba tinde ki long cheba bo ki ta singe chi lunga yi sum le ya teba me de nying ki ko ko tang zi chi nying chi ene nying ri besa na lu de pa pi na de pa pi na ba sheba de pa pi ne nyi a tsawa nyi ne me de ba ta lunga nyi de le a la bo che ta na ba sheba ta bo chi le cha sha ba yi na ta chi tunda wo ma men che la ene ku shin nam she ta ta tun sa ni nye be luk su che ni ta ye chi da shi se ni nye chi ye bu re sa be ta du ti shi le sha be to ne ni ta tun sa ni nye be luk su che ni ka bu ku shi nam shi se chi mi su ka ni nam shi cho du le sha ba chi ki ni ke ba yi ku shi nam shi se ni chi o te tin de shi ni chi sha ya chi ta nam shi cho ye che ni ku shi nam shi tin de shi sha ya chi ta rang ju bu ta bu chi Kuja yigi namba shabal dagi dang musu dote sene ane yigi namba shetita kia watongo me wan tandali yong dene ma chimal ndo dene dita ndo nye tika yigi namba shetira chisa na dasen se ten nye ake ta yidi re shasa man jiu ota tende es cheje <hesitation> chi ta chi ta ten zan nye ayo dene ta haji ta tia ngona tane cheje pa tanju be ribe tone pa cheba ina ane tu sumul jan cheba ina Nye ya me dengin chi, tu sumul jan che ba yi chi na nde ba ni ga mong ba ni dung yul ta ta wa sa ya ge ngun e ta ni pe cha she ge cha she yang che che be ane nam she ndire se na zu zu ya chi chu ni nye ta me dengin, ba ti ngun e ta ni ta na ngaran so ge ta nde an ge tu spa dengin ge chu zu ti na ne ta ta wa singin be nye tu ya chi me du wa ba ko be ti. Tu jo tung du tung du le jan ni pe jo me du wa ti cha ni ina ya ane wa ji lu ma sun ti wa ji ba bo da sun ji ti ti ji ji ma ji ba bo da ma ran ji chitar sun wa ta ji ling ya wa ji ni ta ji du e men me de ba ta te ta ndo ma se be ma ran so ni se de be bi gong e she ba te ra wa re ni ku ba ale shi na pa yu sha chi sun yu sha ni ku de be ka gi ni tu ku ku ka gi ane yi gi she ba te cha wa re o ta Gong e shebe rabe kabla da di sheba ti kan di shagi ina ni tu kuba kala da di mesa ba yan zomle ba ni tu kuba kala tin di sheba tamu di da di sigi ina tan di gong e sheba la ba en du se so a nyong nyong su nyong sheba kala en da ngun yu di mesa ba yan zomle ba tu se ta zon san di nye be luk sche na tin di gi nyong di sabu chi ye de ba chi du le chan ni ni ya me de ba ane ni Tara ga chan ni na ya ni ta me da ba ti nde ni ti long jaba ba da sin ni ti ta tan ju ba lang ni kar kan sun gu yor chaba ni na ta ju ta ke zam na cho zam na te ne ta min ge par sha zam shi ma to ta shi se ne da di re sin ni zu gu zu ya ji ni ya yi yao ma re si mo kan shi ni te ne ke wa te ma ke te la ke we ran shi yo ma yi ke la ra le kan de Tong ba she ka shi tong yi she de pa yi 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 sun ta ma jo bi she bi do yi ka ba o ta ti sun gu do ba ju ta ke cho ta ma te ne chung ba yi yi za e ne ka ni ya te me ra wan gi ra ngon ni chu bi tong ba ta as she she o ta ti re ta de ngara su te ni jung mu sa gi te ni sa ti ju ta cha she la te ni chung wa chi re es ti de yi yi za ti gi Jam jong di kari res na an rangon ni tube kang a teme rangon di rangon ni tube tong bara das ni o ti gi <hesitation> ting juju zen di chene rangon ni tube tong bate sungu ya yimba o ti gi ta tanda ngaran so gi zin su ti kang a ya teba me ba linge wa ti zin ya ti ta <hesitation> dang zin si na mindu o ti mu din zin si na mindu Mari be tsawa ko be tsawa mari be sina be du o tu so kanga ju sa ti na ti ju lo ho lo ti ti ndi ti ane ti te tar tu so ngon tar tu en tse na nye yo ri be sina me da ba ri be che be tse na ane ko mi se ti mi se ti ndo te a mo 
אז אנחנו אומרים שמצבי התודעה האחרים הם לא טבועים בטבע התודעה, הם לא נכנסו אל טבע התודעה. that is afflicted phenomena, obscurations are not in the nature of our mind, that accounts for the fact that we have Buddha nature. And that also indicates the fact that we are Buddha nature, independence on that, we know it is necessary uh, to become liberated, to attain the state of a Buddha, and we have the potential to do so. We can actually do so. It's thus in terms of the mind, in terms of our mind, it's not at all affected. It's not at all affected by the afflictions. And it's really important to understand that. Now, what is also important is to reflect on what is the object of our misapprehension. For instance, when we talk about the person who enjoys something, a person who utilizes something, and the object that is utilized. Well, first of all, we talk about a person a person acting, utilizing things, well, a person obstructed by ignorance. It seems, it seems to this ignorance, it seems that there's a controller I, there's this controller self, it appears to the mind, it appears that when we say, well, my, my speech, my consciousness, my body, that there's something controlling it. Of course, we don't say that there is that, that my speech, my so my body, my speech, my mind, that they don't exist. Of course they do exist. They definitely exist, but they do not exist in the way they appear to us. As an independent entity, as something in, independently existent. So as if there was this owner of body, speech and mind that exists independently in such a way that you could, well, theoretically remove body, mind, speech, and still be left with some kind of I. So that is impossible. It's impossible to find such a self that is findable, or to find such a self that exists separate from body, speech, and mind. Of course, it's a little easier to understand that there is no self that is, well, the body, or that is the mind. That, well, first of all, there's no separate I, but then if you look at body, speech, and mind, it's easier to recognize that there is no I that is the body, that there's no I that is the speech. Um, however, it, it's harder when it comes to the mind. Is the I the mind or not? Now, in the lower philosophical systems, other than the highest school, the Prasangika school, they would talk about, for instance, the Alavijnaya. They would talk about this mind basis of all that's presented in the mind only school. So, what, what do they assert? They say this, the person is, is, is that mind, is that mind which holds all the, the imprints. That is, when you look for the person, when you engage in analysis on trying to find the, the essence of the person, well, what is it you find? You find this Alavijnaya, you find that mind basis of all that is always present, that has existed since beginning this time and holds all the imprints. So they talk of actually eight types of consciousness the usual six consciousnesses, an afflicted mind, and this uh, alavijnaya or this mind basis of all. 
That's according to the Chitta Mantra, Mind Only School. And then according to the Madhyamika Svatantrika, well, even though they do not, uh, they do not uh, expound such a, such a uh, consciousness like at the Alavijnaya or mind basis of all, but nonetheless, they say that it is the mental consciousness, it's the continuous, that mental consciousness that has existed since beginning this time, that that is the person. That is the I, that mental consciousness, that mental awareness, that is the I uh, that is found. Like if you analyze what is the I, what is it that you find? Oh, you find that mental consciousness. This is the view of the uh, Svatantrika Madhyamika school. However, according to the highest school, the Prasangika school, they say nothing can be found. Nothing, no, no self can be found. If you look for it, if you engage in ultimate analysis, you won't find it. If you just look at, for instance, the three times, the past, the present, and the future, just from the point of view of things having to exist within the three times, well, can't be found. The past is gone. The future has not happened yet. Then if you look at the present, well, there's no actual present found. If you look at like modern scientists, for instance, you subdivide the present into smaller and smaller moments, like the present minute, the present second, and even that can be further subdivided. And you can go endlessly in terms of the different um, time entities, minutes, seconds, and so forth, and you never find a present moment. So if you can't find a present moment, they're all de dependent on each other, past and future. So therefore past, present, and future cannot be found. Same applies to the self. There is no solid I that can be found. It cannot be found if you look for it. I mean, if you if you if if the view is, for instance, that the I is the mind. Well, let's look at what kind of minds there are. What kind of consciousnesses do we have? There is the mind that we have when we're awake. It's a coarse kind of mind. And then there's the mind that rises when we're asleep. A subtler type of mind. When we're awake, the subtle mind is not active. When we're asleep, the coarse mind is not, not active. Now, if the single eye were the mind when we're when we're awake, well, if that were the, the coarse mind, that were the eye, then we wouldn't exist while we're asleep because there's no coarse mind active or, or, or present when we're asleep. If it were the other way around, if it were if the self were the very subtle mind that only arises at the time when we are asleep or when we die, well, then while we're awake, we wouldn't have a self. Therefore, again, it doesn't help, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to say that there's this I that is the mind, for instance, which mind do you choose? And there's really nothing findable. It's it's contradictory to say that there's this findable I. It's contradictory in terms of anything that exists. So Therefore, from the point of view of the Prasangika school, it is said that the I comes about as a result of many causes and conditions, and of course, as a result or independence on being merely labeled. So there's nothing to point at in terms of the I, there's nothing we can point at to say, this is the self. And this is what's also said in the sutra, that whatever exists whatever compounded phenomena there is it arises from causes and conditions it doesn't it's not arisen independently it doesn't exist uh in in such a way that it, it is it exists as being a findable object it exists independence and that is my homeland basically that is like i'm so familiar with that that's my homeland this is what these uh, words of the sutra express therefore phenomena arise in dependence on other aspects, on other phenomena, the self and anything else. They depend, they arise, so let's take the self, the self arises in dependence on causes and conditions, the first type of dependence. It arises in dependence on uh, parts and it arises in dependence on being merely enabled. And so it doesn't, it doesn't exist in and of itself. Which accounts for the fact therefore that the mind, the, the, our wrong, our misapprehension, our ignorance, our basic misapprehension that rests at itself. Well, it's a wrong type of mind. Its object simply doesn't exist. It cannot be found. If its object were to exist, we would be able to find it, but it's not, it's, it's in contradiction um, to, to reality, to reasoning, and it simply cannot be found. And in that sense, it's really important to understand, to understand 
that nature of the mind to understand that phenomena do not exist in such a way. And this is why also Nagarjuna said, for instance, um, in his um, precious garland, uh, he described, he, he compared, um, he compared the, um, just a second, let's just find the, the quote, hope I can. Um, no, I don't find it right away. But he's, he's talking about uh, like a um, appearance of, he's talking about, um, for instance, um, when you have an appearance of water, like an, like an illusory kind of appearance of water uh, from far away, like a, a um, um, sorry, a fat and like a, like a, um, a, a mistaken appearance, for instance, when it's really hot and you see in the distance, there's this, 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 this water, like this, this appearance of water in the distance because of the heat. When you come closer, you realize that doesn't exist. So in a similar way, these kind of optical illusions, as from afar, they seem to appear very solidly and, and, and to appear in that way. However, when we come closer to them, we realize that they don't exist in that way. So similar, similar to these optical illusions, when it, with, regard to, with regard to emptiness or the, the lack of inherent existence of phenomena, usually to our mind ordinarily things appear to exist in and of themselves but when we really try to find them when we when we look for them we can't find them so in that same way um taking that example that nagarjuna gives in his text well we should look at the actual existence of phenomena so now i'm going to look for this verse um, יש איזה שמות שונים, מונחים שונים בפילוסופיה הבודהיסטית, אנחנו קוראים לזה grasping of the self, או אחיזה בעצמי, אחיזה בקיום כאמיתי, הבערות שהיא הבערות השורש הבסיסית, ולמרות שהבערות של אחיזה בקיום אמיתי, של, של אחיזה בעצמי, אוחזת בתופעות או בעצמי בצורה הזאת, אם אנחנו מחפשים את העצמי בבסיסי התיוג שלו, אנחנו לא נוכל למצוא אותו. אריה נגרג'ונה אמר באחד הבתים בטקסט של המדריך של שורש החוכמה, הוא אמר ש... מיראז', סורי, זה את זה, מיראז', זה כמו מיראז' בבית הספר, יש כזה עניין של מיראז', יש מים שאנחנו מתקרבים קרוב למיראז' הזה, ל... אוקיי, אז זה בפרס 52. It's verse 52. So it's 52. Um, a form that is viewed from afar is seen clearly by those nearby. If a mirage were actually water, why would those nearby not see it? As in the case of a mirage, uh, seen from afar who view the world, see it to be real just as it is, but being silenced, it is not seen by those nearby. So it's verse yeah, 52. Um, so it tells it tells it says exactly that I'm sorry I'm just taking a picture for the translator as <laughs> שנתי דבע אומר במדריך שלו לנוער גרובודיסאפה בפרק מספר תשע, הוא אומר, without contacting the imputed object, you will not, un, you will not understand um, how um, you will not be able to um, understand how it is not apprehended, משהו כזה. זה אומר שבלי שאנחנו בעצם נזהה את ה... בלי שאנחנו נזהה את ה... דבר שאנחנו רוצים לשלול, אנחנו לא נוכל, לא נוכל בעצם להבין את חוסר קיומו. הבית שדרך אגב שהרימו את ש...
if a mirage were actually water, why would these nearby not see it? Also. That long jaje che, that long jaje wo is the imbal chasha, and the jachim would shoot kundo. That long jaje che, that the budule chasha na, to go dube, and she gugu duba the gugu madube che, in a kora. ジョンシジョンシチルテンチュンバチルマスジョンシジョンアシウティリリリネチェンコニベランシチェンチマトチギリレスネジョンアチュジョンメッセージペドツュンワチペドテンチモティネニェンハチミドワスオタティジョンシ
Now, previously, Rinpoche gave the explanation with regard to the person who enjoys other objects, who utilizes other objects and so forth. So the person, so the, the being. And of course, more explanation can be given with regard to that. Now, with regard to the objects, so objects that we utilize, objects that we um, that we enjoy, etc. Now, with regard to those, uh, in particular, like physical objects, when we consider uh, physical objects, well, they have arisen in dependence on, for instance, the elements, or as as according to modern science, there would be the different uh, subtle particles such as atoms. So it's really the coming together of uh, the the four elements, uh, such as the earth elements, etc., as it's traditionally explained, or the coming together of atoms of subtle particles, independence on that, they create this whole. They create this whole entity, which we describe as the object. Now, within these subtle art particles, we can't find the essence of this object. So, on the very subtle level. It's really just the coming together of these elements. It's this, the coming together of these extremely subtle particles that create a physical object. But does that mean it doesn't exist? The object doesn't exist just because we can't find some essence? No, it doesn't mean that. It means the object is merely labeled on the basis of these many different uh, particles, on the basis of their function, etc. We merely label them. So we could say they benefit us, they harm us, so they have certain functions and conventionally we can talk of all the different functions. So on the conventional, we talk about the conventional here as known in the world. This is how the existence of phenomena is described in the text. They don't exist in and of themselves. They don't exist independently, but as known to the world in a conventional sense. But when we say they're merely known by the world, well, even being known, cannot be found. Even being known, even being conventional, that is also merely labeled on the basis of something else. On the basis of something else, we say, this is known to the world. Again, doesn't exist in and of itself. And so this is why, in particular, with regard to the elements and so forth, uh, understanding that even the elements, that which is the basis, that is also merely labeled. It's a mere designation, which is why Nagarjuna said in his um, Precious Garland, uh, in verse 99, he says, since it is merely the absence of form, space is merely a designation. How can there be form without the elements? Therefore, the mere designation does not exist. Oh, he has a slightly different translation, but yes, so you can see the, the same verse here. Mm -hmm. um, and so Basically, that what this verse tells us here is that even that which is merely uh, even even the basis based on which we label something that is also just labeled, and we won't be able to find anything. This is why objects don't exist in and of themselves. When we talk of an enemy, we talk of a friend, we talk of good and bad. It's just labeled. That is merely designated. It's merely labeled. For instance, if someone makes us feel good, if we feel good in the presence of a person, we label them friend. If a person makes us feel miserable, if we don't uh, feel comfortable around them, we label them enemy or we label them someone we don't like. But in actuality, all this, all these characteristics, all these qualities that we, that we uh, um, ascribe to someone, friend, enemy, and so forth, they're merely labeled, independence on many different factors. 
there's no one who's like just a perfect friend, just a perfect person. It may seem to us that a particular person is totally positive, just has positive qualities, but that is just in relation to how we perceive them. This is not in relation to another person sees them. So in relation to us, in relation to how we feel, we perceive this person as someone good, as someone positive, as someone friendly, etc. But another person has a very different perspective, again, in relation to other factors. Then the same goes the other way around if we don't like someone if we if we have an enemy someone who doesn't make us feel good and independence on which we then label them enemy it seems this person is just a hundred percent negative they're just they don't have any positive qualities they're just a bad person just an evil person we think of like an evil person that evilness we just assign that we just designate evilness on the basis of certain attributes that we perceive certain attributes that are perceivable in general. So based on that, we uh, label evil person. But there's not a single person who's 100% evil who doesn't have any uh, good qualities. Even someone we perceive as 100% evil has qualities, has positive qualities. And this person may have a lot of friends. And again, from the perspective of these friends, seeing these positive qualities, this person is labeled something different. Therefore, it's important to understand with regard to an evil person, a friend, an enemy, they're merely labeled on the basis of many different aspects, <clears throat> our perception and so forth. In dependence on all that, we then label. <coughs> Excuse me. However, there is in, in the, the problem is that we have this what's called the exaggerating attitude this exaggerating attitude which arises from the root misapprehension of reality that perceives phenomena to exist in and of themselves that misapprehension that then gives rise to what is called the exaggerating attitude the exaggerating attitude which perceives phenomena to exist inherently as positive or inherently as negative and then they give rise to our uh, other perceptions of phenomena such as seeing someone as evil or as 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 good or bad and so forth so that exaggerating attitude giving rise to our uh, view of what is good and what's bad and so forth that has its root at our mistaken our mistaken minded root misapprehension of reality that perceives phenomena to exist from their own side to exist objectively to exist from their own side <laughs> So once again, it was verse 99, that room that you recited from the Precious Garland by Nagarjuna. Um, how can there be form without the elements? It's actually the whole verse, but Rinpoche mainly focused on the last two lines. How can there be form without the elements? Therefore, the mere designation does not exist. Jumme that <laughs> Tendit <laughs> Go 
Sindici bena tici duge sene, hen, co java chayum becola, near me in the Ramon and Matuba, chi, sour of chi, mus nianati indi in the cochawatanda, tea choli, lo chawatanga, chichata, danda, chingaja chado singing in your moloti, tanda, tagi, chuchum, shuji, devati, lamsa tamatani, chuku, kudevacavi, chutamuji, lo shavanesi, lamsa. Ci zuzu sa mi deva kachingu ci cede a suci, o lamsama, shangraci, e deva ci, rangoni tube, tingi, sangu kawadua, rangoni tube, niamba kawadua, rangoni tube, nasci in set kawadua, rangoni tube, dinduce, kawadua sna, tingi. Alet rangoni matuba set, tizam do masepe, ti rangoni matube, ducen shagi, tinjun singe. Chashi, you can mongo, she would you sober ten, chuma in batisha in my inaya, child dance at Taiji, Lord Chingaranzo Macum, Carsore, Nyambo Macum, but Wangi, but shook change Kayonati, but you can't chash and not so to chuma, Corti, some much cover in Tamantad, Lamsama, Shidrachi, or Tinichi. Yonder, Tindin, Ramon and Matuba, some do sag, Tets on the Masse, and a Kunzo Vicha. Chashi Tindi, Thomas Hobble said, Piggy Young, and Corapatuigi, and Chadangloria, and Nimbachetri, and Nubati, Yedeva. Don't we know what to do in a minute? Conduct Tinji Yedeva, what in this church? Chunza, Susu Nami Kimza, Chichamma Changanizu Ne, Chessa. And he gave up to that to get to someone law, Chashi Mobu Shibuchi, then did not all ten Chundavachi, Remadoji, Michigs and Dutsu to Edgi, not nothing for the city, Medeva, Tame Tame Duchena, till they lent to Sosolaya, Java Yedavachi, but two change the cha dang chadong dancing singing, Munetanegi, Maran to summon the Shinji, Yerba Nashi should say near to Dusna, Medeva to Zota, Munetan Susu Yondor, Gone Dus, Javaina. And then Jung say a tiggy, the Maribas, the quarrels of Maribas chumbe, Chaso Nyomu chumbe, what to get the year, then Jung is in the chamber, Rashima, no tiggy, new year, Nyamu chigi, or Tinde chigi, and some tea and chigi, compared to Tambaina, Nami chigi say, Rashima never lock, then Jung lotti, and then Jung is in the chamber, Rashima never lock and Chita Lam Narbashia do Strene and Tarbel Comania, Tabachimbuco, Comania, Miss Egita, go Tabata Mamma, you sent home and go to a year of tea, but in the Russia, let us do this in the Chile. As Rimpoche. Now, with regard to this particular verse, um, now what we come to understand is that phenomena, as like physical phenomena, is just their coming together of many elements or many subtle phenomena, uh, subtle particles, is they're coming together that form the coarse objects we see around us. So if we just go on to a subtler level, if we uh, kind of view phenomena on a subtler level, such as their atoms. So for instance, quantum physics, quantum physics uh, from the point of view of quantum physics. So again, scientists, quantum um, um, on, on the level of the of the quantum or quantum physics, physics, there's nothing that can be found. If you look at the different particles, their entities, there's nothing findable there. And it's clear from the point of view of quantum physics that they're merely designated, that they're merely labeled that nothing is really found to exist from the side of the object, that there's nothing that exists uh, objectively. And if that is true on a subtler level, if this is true from the point of view of subtle phenomena, such as the atoms, such as elements, as they're mentioned here, well, then it's definitely true for coarse phenomena as well, that are just formed on the basis of all these subtle phenomena. I'm talking about physical objects, material, like the material world. Everything is merely designated. So, on the basis of their, uh, of, of uh, on the basis of, for instance, these subtle particles, we designate coarser objects. However, because we don't understand that properly, 
well, different affliction, afflictive emotions arise in our mind. There's this basic misapprehension that gives rise to attachment, that gives rise to aversion, to competitiveness, envy. And we all have those. We all have experience of those. And when they arise, it seems that the object that they apprehend, that these different afflictive emotions apprehend, it seems that these objects appear solidly as if they as if they were like concrete and solid entities. This is how it feels to our mind. It seems that there's something in and of itself. It seems something findable there. But if we come to understand, if we come to understand that that is impossible, if we actually realize, I mean, not to mention actually realizing, gaining a deep realization, if we have just some core sense, some mere sense that phenomena just simply cannot exist in that way, that will right away have an effect on our afflictive emotions. Right away, they will slightly be reduced. So it's a bit like adding cold water to hot, hot boiling water. The temperature goes down right away. So our afflictive emotions will lessen. Just leaving aside realizing, fully realizing emptiness, the lack of inherent existence of phenomena, just giving a, getting a rough sense of how phenomena really exist, it will have an um, influence on us. So we, we come to understand initially that certain situations don't exist inherent, inherently, that the competition, that which we're competing with, or what we're the objects of our competition, they don't exist inherently. Our self doesn't exist inherently. They appear to exist in and of themselves, but are not. And it's based on the understanding that they're dependently arisen. So it's the independence on dependent arising, dependent origination. We come to understand that phenomena arise independent on causes and conditions, and they're made of parts. They're made of parts, of many different parts um, that on the basis of which then we label this, we label that. So these parts, these subtle atoms, it's just because we perceive the objects to exist in and of themselves that we generate um, attachment, we generate aversion in our mind. But really, in essence, there, there's, there's nothing there. There's no essence within phenomena. There's nothing essential that can be found. It's just many causes and conditions, many parts coming together. And based on that, we label this, that, and the other. And once we get some sense of that, we'll immediately reduce our afflictive emotions. So understanding that the object doesn't exist inherently, understanding that it's a mere conventionality, it exists nominally, merely conventionally, uh, that will truly help us. And basically what we need to understand is that on a smaller scale, for instance, in our family, with our friends, or on a larger scale, like countries, different countries and so forth, all the problems arise from that basing with apprehension. They all arise from that wrong view, giving rise to the other afflictive emotions. And it's important to understand they actually have a responsibility, a responsibility to work on this, to gain some understanding, um, to understand that the objects that, well, the objects of our attachment, the object of our aversion, they cannot be found. When, engage, when engaging, when uh, undergoing ultimate analysis, they cannot be found. And it is really helpful, therefore, to reflect on dependent arising, dependent origination, then naturally it will harm this mind that misperceives phenomena. It perceives, misperceives, uh, misperceives how phenomena really exist, and it harms our afflictions. It, it reduces our afflictions. It harms our, our afflictions in the sense that it reduces them and weakens them. And so instead, we should then increase our understanding of emptiness, the mind that realizes emptiness in combination with the mind that realizes dependent arising. And if you have that, the mind that realizes emptiness, the mind that realizes dependent origination, well, then you are able to develop the, the different stages of the path. Your mind will go through the different levels, the different stages, that is the five path, and eventually be liberated, will reach become enlightened, reach the enlightened state of a Buddha. And it's really independence on logical reasoning. It is in reliance on logical reasoning, therefore, um, that this happens. And Rinpoche said, well, with regard to 
to emptiness, we look at verse 99. Well, what is true for, of course, coarser phenomena, such as um, such as the, the coarse objects, the material objects we see around us. Well, there, if we if we, if it's true for that, then it's also true for unconditioned space, for instance, which is slightly subtler. This is why it says in verse 99, um, for course of phenomena, it's merely the absence of form and space, even for something subtler like space, that's also the case. So how can there be form without the elements? If the elements on a subtler level don't exist intrinsically, how can there be the course object? And so therefore the mere designation, even so the, the basis of a designation doesn't exist. And therefore, this is the, the follow-up kind of logic. If the coarse object cannot be found, then the subtle object can also not be found. And if the coarse and the subtle object cannot be found, then also designation itself, the mere designation, that also cannot be found. So thus, the coarse object that is merely labeled doesn't exist in and of itself. The basis of imputation, which are the, the subtler phenomena, they don't exist in and of themselves. And the mere designation that designates something coarse on the basis of something subtle, that doesn't exist in and of itself. So Rinpoche explained, this is how this text here, this, this verse in particular, uh, the precious garland, kind of presents these logical reasonings step by step. מגיבים בצורה רגשית מסוימת לתופעות שנאה, לאויבים וכולי, אנחנו צריכים לחשוב על זה שאם אנחנו נחפש את האנשים האלה בסיסי התיוג שלהם, לא נוכל למצוא אותם. לא נוכל למצוא אותם, הם לא מתקיימים בצורה אינהרנטית, הם חסרים, הם נעדרים קיום קיום אינהרנטי, וההבנה הזאת היא זאת שתגרום לנו להתקדם לאורך חמשת ה... Um, the particles, the subtle particles, the elements, then we come to see that also those subtle particles, those elements which serve as the basis of designation for these coarser objects, they were also merely labeled. And then based on that, also with regard to subtle objects, other than these particles, such as unconditioned space, we come to see that as merely labeled. And the designation itself is merely labeled. So now it's time to ask questions if you've got some questions, uh, you're welcome to ask those, those now. We've got a little bit of time left for a few questions. Thank you very much, Rinpoche. Uh, so we'll have now the question and answer session, and the questions will be read by the respective language assistant. And uh, as time is short today, and uh, since yesterday we didn't get a chance to hear a question from the Russian speaking audience, today I invite Misha to ask the first question, please. Misha, Vash Vapos, Pajalusta. Yes, good afternoon, dear Jadrian Pachitia. First of all, thank you very much for your kind of teaching. We are very happy to see you in good mood and good health. We have a few. Very short questions, but they're all connected to each other. First question it's about how we can recognize the object of negation towards oneself or towards ego or self. You can call it in a different way. Second question is is it always the same or it can be in different way? For example, just it like feelings or some conceptions, how we can end third question how we can understand or how we can know that we understood it properly or in correct way. It's three questions, yes, how we can recognize it. Uh, is it always the same? And how we can know that they understood it properly? I hope it should be clear enough. Thank you very much. Um, Um, 
Chitarnanshi now at the Ranshi to the Tongba, the Matuba Sagi, Tawa Tiang, Da Mebe Tawa, Kandit Lolia, Repetitive to Coat, you sent in Yasuna, T, you sent it, and it's Punso de Vichu to Samalia, Ribati Tonama, Chitum, Rogores, and then Umashi Gavetala, Ayadeve, Chigitabu Kain, but Tenukun Tonga Nisin, what do send him? Sungi Hores, Da. Gaza Nitsu Sengendi, Gaza Sengi Shandaki, Panane Tsuki on the Tindekeja Mare, Tandang Aran Solia, Nietagi Kundu Shibe, Longe Bobota, Longe Chelia, and G. Maran Sola Nandan Kadis Nangadu, Lingevati Nandaya, Gugen Chasele, Chick Tindis in Duke, Kali and Tuba Meva Nande, Tagara, Gaza Nansu Res. Tarare, Carresena, two things are nonsense, demolitions. Two things are Carna by in a Tara, you didn't Yoba Tabuchi, Kanya Temeg Yoba Tabuchi, Nashi Shingi, two things are nonsense, demolitions. Codones, Tatipa, Yuva Tange, Kana Mataya, on dear Chasha, not all ten took the Yinda, again Kanya Tuba Meva. Yet the Menda Summer, Kanan Tombasha, Kanan Watara, and Betty, you'll Ramon Lingavati, yet the Tata Yomar Summer, or Kanan Tombasha, or Tindic Loni, the daughter of Chumbaina, and Gomuluku Tai Combati, and Tidinia Resin, Kondako de Temer de Musungare, two things are Nancy, the Marishin, called Dones, the Adulogy, called Dones. Kanantomba Gumuludugi, in Tavichava Zobres, Kamshi Konde Chernam, Kamjiki, Gunde Namia Lua Metu, Mikbe Teso Kani, Gunde Namia Lua Meva Pet, Pet Demuch and Jotu at Tigla, Tagi Kondu Shiban Chadangalo, Ben Nati Potas, Zutu Sati, Gun Ganga, Mikta Ganga, Kayan Zutu Jumeva, Shituba Chumba Inas, Sinzi Kaza. Naya Lua, Mipe Teso Kai, Unshiba, Tennis and Jagger Lamna Fins. What a two sentiment, the Nichimato love to Masons. 
אז השאלה של... So with regard to all phenomena, uh, it is said that, well, for instance, in the Sutra, um, the king of the king of concentration Sutra, it is said with regard to all phenomena. Well, first of all, we should reflect on how the self exists, how the self appears to ourselves. That's the first thing we should do. How does the I appear to us? And then once we've understood that, once we've understood this object that is the, 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 that is the, the self, that is that which is the utilizer of all other objects of the body and so forth, once we've understood this, we should then apply whatever we've understood uh, to other objects, to objects such as the element, uh, sorry, the, the aggregates and so forth. We should apply it to all those other objects and that then becomes easier. So really, that is the view based on, on our self and how the, the eye appears to us. On the basis of that, we can then understand that the self doesn't exist in and of itself. Um, it doesn't exist inherently. And then uh, apply this to the aggregates, other objects. And it is said, for instance, by Ayadeva in his 400 verses. So whatever you have apprehended on the basis of one object, you can also apprehend on the basis of other objects. I haven't been able to find the exact quote yet. Um, I mean, the exact uh, verse number yet, but I'll continue look for it, looking for it. But the point is that with this verse, he's really saying that once you grasp it, once you understand that this is not true for a particular phenomenon, so let's say the eye, um, then it's very simple. It's very simple to understand this also uh, for the, the, the rest, for, for all other phenomena. So once you get that understanding, and the great scholar Denver Drummer, he also talked about this. He gave this quote that um, um, uh, Rinpoche just, uh, he just quoted him saying that, um, he, he also quoted him as saying, whatever appears to you so make an effort to get a sense of whatever appears to you the way phenomena appear uh, as to exist in and of themselves as if being independent so when, whenever you get a sense this object exists in and of itself able to define itself when you get that sense you should understand that that appearance is not in accordance with reality so you should turn it around turn it around in the sense that whatever appears to you as existing somehow solidly, independently, able to, to, to be found when you just look for it, then just take the opposite of that and understand it's empty of exactly that. It's empty in that way. And this is why also Lama Tsongkhapa said in his uh, Praise of Dependent Arising, um, excuse me, that I'll easily find, Oh yeah, verse five. Um, just need to tell the translate. Um, just to say, um, and so forth. So who's who's well, in English it says whatsoever depends on conditions that is devoid of intrinsic existence. What excellent instruction can there be more amazing than this proclamation? Uh, so with regard to this verse, it tells us it tells us directly um, just to see, I'll just take a picture. Um, so this verse, verse number five, what it tells us is that whatever depends on whatever depends therefore whatever depends on conditions, so being dependent on other phenomena, being interdependently arisen, we can therefore know um, that phenomena cannot exist, cannot have an intrinsic nature. And therefore, independence on that existence, dependence on causes and conditions, dependence on parts, it becomes clear that this intrinsic existence that constantly appears to us, that that is impossible, that they appear that way, that although they appear, they're dependent on causes and conditions, they appear that way, nonetheless, they don't exist. And that is what is said by, by Lama Tsongkhapa himself, that this is really the path of the Buddha. Uh, in that way, we can come on to, to understand um, that this is the, the path we should follow. Sorry, I remember she gave a lot of quotations, um, which I cannot find right away, but really, uh, all in all, Rinpoche gave these different quotations saying, well, we should focus on 
uh, how things appear to us fast of all. Um, this independent kind of appearance, able to define itself, something existing from its own side and objectively, and then just take the opposite of that. Just understand that it cannot exist that way. Independence on dependent arising as set forth, as descri uh, described by the Buddha, as praised by Lama Tsongkhapa, since anything depends on causes and conditions, since anything uh, depends on, um, on parts, and and being merely labeled, so therefore uh, it's it's pretty it's clear that phenomena can't exist in that way. And based on that understanding, based on understanding that phenomena uh, don't exist inherently, not in and of themselves, uh, therefore we can come to see that they that they are um, that they therefore we can come to see um, that they uh, do not exist inherently. Okay, so Slihaza. Um the Bachin I just got the wrong text. It's uh, the praise of dependent arising that remember she quoted. um dela de tamal zeret tamal de okay um gam rimboche gam kara besofosh davar et she asked are you not done with translating so there's a slight confusion about which text there was but it was the other the praise to in praise of dependent rising by lama tsongkhapa which is verse 5. Whatsoever depends on conditions, that is devoid of intrinsic existence. What excellent instruction can there be more amazing than this proclamation? Um, so Verse in the 400 verses by Ayadeva. Hmm? Nangarance and <laughs> Or <laughs> Oh, 
ตอนนั้นดาวทาเบเทลาเตยเยซุนเดเวยันเดนจูตาดุชุมยันดาลาเนเนเบเจิมบะตองอนกิชิญิงเจเตมเบเจซุนตองบะญิงกงกงกงย
میشه توجی چه شوی این اسرائیل چی میان تو مشت کنان زوی دی جرم دی سوی جه این لیمو پی چی کی نازو تانی پاسو چی تالم جونی یه همه چی تلیا چی کلی جای منگو یوسره توجی سوی منگو یوسره توی آمگو یوسر تو تو سامان لگ لینی کنان سو این یه یه داده چه سامان توجی چه شوی so, Ramachi says we have now reached the end of this teaching, of this uh, uh, teaching session, and the end of the teachings altogether. And Ramachi would like to, to uh, thank the translators who uh, have translated his words. And likewise, Ramachi would like to thank his friends in Israel, his uh, well acquaintances, his friends from the Dharma Friends of Israel, all the organizers who've worked so hard to, to organize this, to put this together. So it must have required, yeah, a lot of hardship, kind of getting it all together, organizing this online meeting. Um, they had to get together time and again, have their own meetings. Um, and so that was definitely difficult. And so um, he would like to thank you, all the organizers, plus all those who attended the teachings. Thank you for this. For enlightening us with this wonderful and so important teaching Thank you so much, Rinpoche. We hope to have another opportunity to receive your teaching very soon, and our greatest hope is to see you again in Israel really soon. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you in Hebrew. Thank you very much in Hebrew. We will conclude now uh, with a, a dedication with Venerable Carson, but before that, I would also like to Thank uh, Geshe Kelsen Wangmo and Venable Carlson and Chechen Mongush who um, made it possible for so many participants to listen to this teaching in their own language. Thank you very much for your kindness and for all your efforts. So uh, Venable Carlson now, please. Thank you very much. In the London Circle by Snow Mountains, you are the source of all happiness and good, all powerful dreams. It ends in Gato. Please remember this. I'm sorry. May the Buddha Dhamma flourish. Okay, and I waited for Rinpoche to finish his dedication, so we'll continue with the dedication in English. May the Buddha Dharma flourish and its upholders have long lives. May all sentient beings arise into happiness and their temporal and ultimate goals be fulfilled. So the merits of those of these virtuous actions may quickly attend the state of the Guru Buddha and lead all living beings without exception into that enlightened state. May the precious body mind not yet born arise and grow. May that bond have not declined but increase forevermore. Thank you so much. Lastly, I would like just to uh... Uh, acknowledge and uh, thank everybody who made this teaching possible for all the teams, Anette and Misha and everybody at uh, Dharma Friends of Israel, especially Gila, Shachar, Iki, Rit, Liora, Tom, and just everyone who participated and took part in the mutual effort. Thank you all for your devotion and enthusiasm. Recordings will be available at uh, the Dharma Friends of Israel uh, YouTube channel and also um, at the Four Noble Truths Center in Moscow. I remind you again that everybody is most welcome to practice generosity. Please see the uh, links in the chat box. And may we, may we meet again in many more Dharma teaching events. Thank you all. Goodbye. Thank you so much, Rinpoche. See you all. Thank you very much. Yeah. For the Hebrew speakers, we'll have today as well a 
session with Venerable Carlson La uh, for questions and answers in Hebrew. שאלות ותשובות עם הנזיר קרצון באחד וחצי באותו הקישור. להתראות, כולם מוזמנים. תודה רבה.